We begin with that breaking news out of Ukraine and the Russian assault. The capital city of Kyiv now on lockdown, but still in Ukrainian control, despite the overwhelming might of the Russian army. One U.S. official tells ABC News some Russian forces are disoriented. One soldier heard saying, we don't know who to shoot. They all look like us. Moments ago, our team on the ground in Kyiv witnessing a large explosion and massive fire south of the city. Earlier, ordinary Ukrainians lining up to receive weapons to fight as neighborhoods become war zones. This video showing the moment a rocket or missile strikes an apartment building. And this is the aftermath. Incredibly, no one was killed. It's not clear which side fired. But a U.S. official says Russian forces have launched more than 250 missiles into Ukraine. Tens of thousands of Ukrainians, now refugees, creating a humanitarian crisis. Our teams there are capturing the emotional scenes at border crossings. Fathers saying goodbye to their families, staying to fight. And moments ago, that breaking news of another economic blow to Putin's Russia. The U.S. and some of its allies agreeing to remove some Russian banking institutions from a key international financial system. We have team coverage on the ground, and our chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, leads us off from Ukraine. Tonight, the sounds of war ringing throughout Kyiv. The Russian military renewing its assault on Ukraine's capital, the city under strict curfew for the next 48 hours. That as skirmishes break out in the streets. The threat of Russian bombardment so present tonight that the news station Ukraine 24 is anchoring its coverage from an underground parking garage. According to a senior U.S. defense official, Vladimir Putin's forces are staging around 20 miles outside of Kyiv, so far unable to take the city. The official saying, we don't believe that they expected the kind of resistance that they're facing. Ukraine's loyal sons and daughters defiant, civilians taking up arms, including this young couple. Married just yesterday, today, they are soldiers. Our Ian panel with volunteers. We are happy that we can protect our country, really. We feel that our devotion and ob obligation to do that. President Volodymyr Zelensky standing ready to fight with his countrymen. With this rallying cry, we withstood and are successfully repelling the enemy's attacks. The fighting goes on in many cities of our state, but we know we are defending our country, our land, and our children's futures. According to a U.S. official, the Russian military has launched more than 250 missiles into Ukraine. Social media videos showing the moment a missile or rocket strikes this apartment building within Kyiv's city limits. It's unclear which side fired. Tatyana and her family were inside that building. She says, my kid's room is now just a hole. If she'd been in there, she wouldn't have survived. Remarkably, no one was killed, but the human toll is growing. Nearly 200 Ukrainians have died in the conflict so far, over a thousand wounded, including children. This unexploded rocket landing near a kindergarten in the middle of a playground. That as Ukraine's neighborhoods become battlefields. This family of 15 forced to flee their home after it was damaged by shelling. Young Anita asking her mother, what if something happens tonight? Where will we go? And now the global community standing in solidarity with Ukraine on top of those harsh sanctions, Germany now sending anti-tank weapons and the U.S. announcing an additional $350 million in military aid, including critically stingers, those shoulder fired anti aircraft missiles. President Biden today saying Putin will pay a serious price for this short term and long term. You have two options start a third world war, go to war with Russia physically, or two, um, make sure that uh, a country that acts so contrary to international law ends up paying a price for having done it. That senior U.S. defense official saying more than 50 percent of the forces Russia arrayed on Ukraine's borders have now pushed into the country. But Ukraine's military is fighting back, claiming to have destroyed a Russian convoy on the road to Kyiv. And to the west, in Lviv, these men preparing Molotov cocktails to fend off the invading army. We crossed from Poland into Ukraine today at its busiest border crossing those cars entering, splitting that sea of humanity. You can see this this push of people that's starting to move towards the gate. Um, they're actually trying to move people back before there are hundreds and hundreds of people here. They're brandishing their documents, 
Some are showing that they are, are foreign citizens. Um, right now, only women and children are being allowed through that gate to Poland. You can't go. I don't want to go. You don't want to go. You want to stay here. To fight? Yes. And everywhere, desperation. Those heart-wrenching scenes. Matt Gutman is with us from Lviv tonight. And Matt, that additional $350 million in military aid authorized by President Biden, how soon will that aid in those critical Stinger missiles actually reach Ukraine? With a U.S. official telling us tonight that that should happen very soon. Obviously, there's some urgency here with Kyiv in such peril. Now, getting those Stinger missiles to the region is the easy part. Getting them into the fight is going to be a lot harder. The Ukrainian airspace is closed and roads and railways are so jammed with refugees right now. Wait. And the timing so critical. All right, Matt, thank you to you and your team. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.